Okay, today we're going to be talking about Chapter 8, Arrays. So arrays are just a group of contiguous memory locations that all have the same name and same type. So let's go ahead and write a little bit of code here. This is just kind of working with an example from the book. Figure 8.2 will be our first example we take a look at. So let's just go ahead and create some arrays in our code here. So if I do something like integer, when I'm defining this, you read it just like this, int array, and that's going to then create our array. So if I do this, I've actually created an object reference because arrays are objects. So I cannot fill up anything with my array. Array doesn't have enough size at this point, so I actually always have to use the new keyword with my array. So in this instance, I have to say new array. So you can see it even comes up with integer. So now that I've done this, I actually have to tell it the size of the array. So for instance, five elements. So what this has done is it's now created an integer array that has five elements that are indexed from 0 to 4. So C Sharp is a zero-based language. Now I also could have done, which generally you would do, is put this all on one line. I just want to show you you could do it both ways to create the same sort of array. So now what we can do is we can actually start indexing each of our array items. So here's how I would actually fill up the first item in my array. So that's sort of the basics on a single dimensional array. We'll be talking about multi-dimensional multi arrays in just a minute. So in this particular program in the book, they've created an integer array. Then they've filled up that array, or initialized it, to five elements. Now they've done a for statement, where we can see here that we've done set our counter to zero. And we've said array.length. So array.length, we can see here, gives us the total number of elements in all dimensions of the array. So for this, this is a single dimensional array, so it's going to give us the number five. So this is going to be from 0, so 0 is less than 5, counter plus plus. So the, this is very important because this is one of the biggest mistakes I see on an array programs, for example, from students, is that this statement ends up going out of bounds. So if you were to have done less than or equal to in this particular statement, then eventually counter is going to be equal to 5, which is going to give you an out of bounds exception because this particular array is only indexed from 0 to 4. Now I know that seems really simple, but it's just very natural as a programmer to make that mistake very easily, especially on your first few assignments. So now let's go ahead and take a look at a multi-dimensional array. Or sorry, we're going to pass an array to a method now. So this is another way that you can declare an array. This is figure 8.13. And so what this is the equivalent of is saying, hey, create a new array with five elements and then filling up those five elements. But it's nice just to be able to do it all on a single line. So it's just a syntax you sort of have to memorize in order to be able to initialize it right when you declare it. So now what we're showing here is, OK, we're also going to learn about this for each statement. So for each is just like the for statement, but what's nice about using the for each statement is that you're guaranteed not to go out of bounds. You're just going to go, you're guaranteed to go through every single index in your collection or array in this particular instance. So you're just saying for each integer in my array. And again, if you ever forget the syntax, you can always just type for each, tab, tab, and that's going to come up with that syntax for you. So in this case, you use for each, and this is just like a for statement where you have to declare your int i, for instance. And what this is going to do is for every iteration, it's going to hold the current index in this value here. So I'm saying, OK, keep looping through. And so for each in integer in my array, here's that value, fill up value. So this is just going to display all of the elements in the array, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now we're going to come down here and call this method called modify array. And so this shows us the syntax for how we can actually pass arrays to methods. And so what we'll notice here is it's just like you're creating that object reference, because that's what you're passing in to this array. 
So what this also shows us is that arrays are passed automatically by reference. Because remember, arrays are objects, so they're passed by reference. So if you pass by reference, that means you're giving the original caller the ability to access this original piece of data. You're not passing in a copy. So that when it does these statements here with this array 2, it's actually modifying the original array elements. So now each of these are going to be multiplied by 2 in this original array because we're passing by reference. And then they're just displaying those again and that's going to prove that they got multiplied by 2 each element. So again it's just important to understand that you are modifying each individual array by reference. Now this next piece here is where we're modifying an individual element. So you can see we're actually pulling out this index 3 so 0, 1, 2, 3 so we're passing in the number 4. But now integers are passed by value. So right here we're passing a copy of this value 4 here. So this is just going to pass in the value 4 to this integer element here, multiply it by 2. However, we're multiplying a copy of that value by 2. So it will not modify the original element in the code. So now we're going to be working with multidimensional arrays. So here is an example of how you can initialize a multidimensional array, just like we saw with the single dimensional array. So if I want to declare my own, I could say int multidimensional array. And you can see there I type just my last bracket. So I'm actually typing that. So I say int bracket comma. You can see how it already created a bracket for me. If I just type a bracket right here, it just replaces the same bracket. It's kind of a nice way that you don't have to move the cursor. You know, so my array equals a new integer array. And so now what I can do here is I want to actually declare, you know, what size I want, how many rows and how many columns. So for instance, if I want two rows and three columns, this would be the syntax. So now let's take a look here. So here we've done the exact same thing. We've created this rectangular array, but here we've just initialized it now. So we're actually initializing the values as we declare it. Now here, they're doing something called a jagged array. Now, I just want to show this to you that you can't actually do this. So basically what they're doing is, is that every row now is a different length. So they're actually declaring a new integer array, just a single dimensional array, in each row here. And so each row is actually a different length. And You can do this. I have never in 15 years found a reason why you would want to do this. But you can do it. So now what we're doing is we're doing this output to array method here. And you can see again we're passing this multi-dimensional array now by reference. Then once we come into here, so how do we actually print out each element in our array? Well since it's multi-dimensional and we have rows and columns now, we have to do nested for loops. So first we have a for loop that loops through all of the rows and then we have a for loop that loops through all the columns. So how do we get how many elements are in each index? So to base or each row and column. So for to get how many items that are in this particular row, you can say a array dot get length and you give it the index that you're or the dimension that you're interested in. And so by saying zero, you're saying give me how many rows. If I say pass in one you say give me how many columns. Now multi-dimensional arrays you can actually have as many dimensions as you want. So you could even have a Z dimension and make it like a cube in memory. And so you'd actually do get length sub 2. Again I've never found a reason to ever do this. Maybe one day you'll find. So this is the syntax for being able to loop through all of the rows and then so you're gonna stay on one row, loop through each column, print out all of its values and then iterate back up again. And then down here, we're showing you how to use the for each statement in order to be able to loop through the elements. So you can see here we're looping through each row, and then we're looping through each element in the row. Just a little bit different when you want to use the for each statement. Now when using the get length, 
if I were to actually have changed this to length on a multi-dimensional array, so if I said array dot length here, that actually gives me all of the the values. So it'd actually be you know two times three, so six elements in my array for two times three here also six. So again, the difference between get length, this is going to give you the length of the dimension that you pass in, but if I do length, that gives you the total number of elements in your whole array. So kind of a little bit of a difference there. So now we've got this example program that I've written for you that you already have out on Canvas. So let's just kind of go over some of the syntax here. So let's go ahead and de declare ourselves an integer array. We'll call it my array and we have to use the new statement and we're going to put four elements inside of our array. So now that we've created our array with four elements, we now load up each of those elements which are index 0 through 3. And now we can loop through here and display this data. So we can actually pull this out and we're going to have to sub i we're going to make that turn that into a string and so we've got this label on the main form that's just displayed right over here and so we're just displaying each element from array so now we want to use the length method on our array and so what we can do now is we have our for statement so we can say for int i equals 0 as long as i is less than we say my rank dot length and then I++. plus plus. So for single dimensional arrays you're getting the total number of elements so that's going to give us four. So it's going to loop through four times from zero to three because it's less than here. You can also use these get lower bounds and get upper bounds so just kind of another way that you can get the lower and upper bounds so this is going to give you zero you know and this will give you the four. So we come down here, how to pass the array to a method. Again, just remember that it's always passed by reference. Here's the syntax, so you're just passing in that object reference here. And then I'm using a for each statement to loop through each integer in that array that's been passed in, and then display it. Now down here with multi-dimensional arrays, we need to declare an integer array called my multi. So if I have an integer, I need a multi-dimensional array to put a comma there. We'll call this my mult equals. Again, we always have to use the new keyword. And then we have to give it the size. And let's do three rows by four columns. And so now we're loading these with values. So here we're loading up the first row, the second row, then the third row, and then all of the corresponding columns within those rows. And just loading up with a bunch of values. Here we're just showing that on a multi-dimensional array, if you use length, it's going to be 3 times 4, which is 12. So that's what's going to get displayed with this particular statement. Now down here, so now we're going to want to loop through all of these. So now we can say my mult, and we want to say i here for the rows, and then j to give us the proper index. Set it to two string, and then I'm just going to add some spaces here because we're displaying it all on a single line. And so this is how you would loop through and display all of the elements from a multi-dimensional array. Here we're just showing you the same thing except now we're doing the get length to give us the rows and columns. Because there's a lot of times if you were to have passed this multi-dimensional array into a method you wouldn't be able to hard code these. You wouldn't know how large they are. So therefore you'd have to use the get length just showing you get lower bound, get upper bound again, and then the syntax for how to pass in a multi-dimensional array by reference. Now we can see here, because I'm doing a for each statement, I'm actually just going to go ahead and if I wanted to display all of them on a single line, I could just do a for each statement because it will loop through every single eight element in my for each.